Hey guys, welcome back to The Shed. Today I'm going to be showing you how to decoat your two-stroke engine so it runs nice and happy. I'll start off by mentioning you won't need to do this that often and it varies from manufacturer to manufacturer when you should do this but from my research online 50 to 100 hours, which is quite a broad range, is when you'll need to perform a decoke on your engine. Now there's a few issues that can occur if you don't perform this piece of maintenance and they are increased compression can cause your engine to run sluggish, it will become harder to pull start, there could possibly be piston and barrel wear from pieces of carbon, or in extreme cases of carbon buildup, a piece of carbon could become glowing hot inside your engine and ignite your fuel mixture before your piston reaches the top dead center. Essentially, forcing your piston back down the barrel and blowing a massive hole in your piston. And no one's gonna want that when they're flying. So the pros of doing this piece of maintenance are, it's gonna prolong the life of your engine, it's gonna be a lot easier to pull start, and your engine's gonna run much happier because there's gonna be an improved airflow out of your exhaust port. So first things first, you're gonna need to gather these tools. Acetone, an automatic transmission fluid, or WD-40. To accompany them, you're going to need gloves and a sponge from your mum's kitchen sink. We're also going to need a brass brush and maybe even a flathead screwdriver, a spark plug socket and ratchet, and Allen keys. Metal polish won't go amiss, and last but not least, kitchen towel. Almost forgot you're going to need drill bits and then a little container to mix up your acetone and transmission fluid. So for obvious reasons, make sure your engine's cooled down before you do any of this work. We don't want any burnt hands on this channel, all right? So let's start taking this head off. First of all, take off your spark plug cap. Now it's not necessary to remove your spark plug if you're taking off the head. I'm gonna do that and you should too because we'll be cleaning the underside of this head once we get that off. So grab your spark plug socket and your ratchet and let's whip the spark plug out. Pop that to one side, you're gonna need that when you go flying later. Next step, most likely the bolts in your head are Allen bolts, so you're gonna need to take the appropriate sized Allen key and then remove all your bolts. Now that we've got all the bolts loose, head just pops off just like that. Now let's have a look at how carboned up this really is. So if we move this piston up to the top dead center, which is there. You can see we've got a little bit of build up here. Yeah, it's nothing too bad. I've seen a lot worse. I've seen a lot better. And on the head here, similar story. We've got quite a bit on there, but this can easily be cleaned off. So start off by moving your piston to the top dead center, and then that is our base to work from. Right then, time to get these gloves on, because this bit you do not want to get on your hands. Grab your container and mix 50-50 of your transmission fluid and your acetone. This is gonna create the cleaning compound we're gonna use on the engine. You won't need very much of this, so don't go wasting it. And just eyeball it, basically. Now that we've got that mixture made up, I'm gonna make my life a little bit easier by taking this sponge and cutting it into three. Make sure you've got a bit of kitchen roll to hand, just for when we're wiping off any excess of this mixture that we're putting on here. And take all of your first small sponge and then dip it in the acetone and transmission fluid mix. Now, at the time of doing this, we can give it a little bit of a mix round. We don't want to saturate it too much, so squeeze off any extra there. And then, first of all, what you're going to do is you're just going to wipe it over and then give it a minute. Whilst this one is soaking, we can go and do the head as well and let that soak in. Now, we should be able to start scrubbing off some of this carbon on top here, which as you can see, it's starting to come off nicely. We can see a nice shiny piston underneath. All right, let's wipe this off with a bit of cloth and see what we've got so far. 
Now, already, without too much hard work, and we're just going to remove this gasket at the same time here as well. We'll need to replace that later. As you can see, we've had a bit of oil leak out there as well, so that's due for replacement, definitely. Right, so with very little effort, and a bit of acetone, and a bit of transmission fluid, you can see already that this piston's coming up nice and clean. So we're going to hit this piston a few more times with that mix just to clear off the rest of this carbon, and we should be good to put it all back together again. Right, now we've done that, take a fresh bit of towel and just wipe off any excess of that mixture that's left on here. And then wind your piston down so you can get any extra that might have just slipped past the top there. There shouldn't be much because your piston ring should create a seal. Slowly move your piston by hand and just continue to clean out any bits that might score the barrel. Now I know this isn't 100% clean, but it's much, much better than it was, and the engine's gonna run a lot nicer with this done. Let's move on to the head itself, and we'll come back to this piece later. Now when it comes to the head, it might be harder to get off this carbon, because the explosion happens right here, which drives the piston, which makes the power of your engine. So just bear with it, keep reapplying the acetone and transmission fluid, and then just keep keep going at it, eventually you'll get there. This is as far as I'm able to get at the Scotch Bright. We've got some other bits of carbon that are really stuck on there, so that's where I'm gonna to start to bring in the brass brush and hopefully we can shift a bit more with that. And it goes without saying, be careful of this face plate here because that's what seals your head to your main engine block. So don't go running the brush over that. We'll get to clean that up in another video. Now, as you can see, that's a lot, lot cleaner, but because I've had to use the brass brush because of that stuck on carbon, I'm now gonna have to polish that so we don't get any weird carbon buildup. The reason I didn't use the brass brush on the piston itself is because it's got lines all the way around it which helps atomize the fuel and air mixture when it comes into the chamber. So let's get to polishing this. Take your metal polish of choice. This is Meguiar's all metal polish. You could also get something like AutoSol, which is a very common one. Any metal polish will do. Um, we're just gonna clean up this head. So we haven't got these little scratches in here anymore, okay. Self-explanatory, take your cloth, get a bit of paste on it, put it on there, and just go round and round and round until it's smooth. Right, so there we go. After about 10 minutes of hand polishing, we've still got a few little scratches left in here, but that's the majority of them out. And you can see it's a nice shiny surface, so hopefully that'll reduce um, the buildup of carbon. Uh, if you really want it to be mental, you could go and get a Dremel with a polishing tool end, and you could really go to town on this and make it mirror, mirror shine finish, which would be the absolute ideal. But for such a small engine, I'm not really gonna worry about that too much. I've cleaned up most of this carbon. I'm gonna clean up this gasket face later on so it's ready to be put back together. Okay, now that you've cleaned up the head and your piston, it's time to grab yourself another cup of tea and we'll move on to the exhaust port and the decompression port. So to clean up these next two pieces, we're gonna to need to take off our exhaust and your exhaust might be a little bit different to mine, so grab whatever tool you'll need to take off your exhaust and go ahead and do that. Now once you've got that off, you should have access to your exhaust port ready for cleaning. Now I'm gonna take off this heat shield and what looks like some gaskets that have been glued in with silicone or some sort of silicone based gasket sealant. They are shot. I'm gonna need some new ones of those. Let's start off by looking at our decompression port. 
and that's this little guy here. It's located above the exhaust port and you may need to move your piston down just to be able to find where that is. Cleaning this out, it's pretty simple. What you're gonna need to do is move your piston down to block all the holes inside the barrel here so that way when we clean out the decompression port, we aren't gonna get any carbon anywhere that we don't want it that's gonna cause damage later on down the road. To start off, take a two and a half mil drill bit and start working by hand and just working out where the angle is. Now you'll start to see bits of carbon come out here and the reason we're doing this by hand is the idea is not to remove any metal but just to remove the carbon in the hole. Okay, now once you've worked that with a 2.5 for a little bit, take your three mil drill bit and then start working that into the hole as well. This one is the actual diameter of the hole so it's going to start clearing out more of that carbon. Now if you look closely in here we can see bits of carbon that have come out of the decompression port. All we'll need to do is blow that out. You can either use the power of your lungs, make sure you close your eyes so you don't get carbon in your eyes, or wear some safety glasses, or if you've got the benefit of using an air compressor, blow it out with an air compressor. And last but not least, let's look at cleaning up our exhaust port. Start by moving your piston to a position where the exhaust port is blocked off when you look through this gap. Okay, so surprisingly, there's not actually that much carbon inside this exhaust port, which wasn't what I was expecting. Now, with your exhaust port, you've got to be very careful that you don't end up damaging the piston inside here or putting too much crud on it, that when you're running your engine again, it's not gonna end up scoring the barrel. So I'm gonna try a, a least aggressive method as possible, and I'm gonna take some WD-40 instead of the transmission fluid and acetone mix and I'm just going to put it on a towel and I'm just going to work it around and hopefully remove most of the carbon inside here. So you don't want to put too much WD-40 on your kitchen towel because you don't want that soaking into the rest of the engine. Just enough to work off the carbon inside this port. As you can see, that's already coming up quite well. Get as much of the looser stuff off as you can with WD-40 and kitchen towel. And then for the rest of the little bits and pieces that are still stuck on there, use a flathead screwdriver just to carefully scrape them off. Don't go too hard because you might slip and gouge the piston. I'm barely putting any pressure on this screwdriver and this carbon is just coming straight off. Once you've finished scraping the carbon out of your exhaust port, that's you done. Just make sure you get any little bits and pieces of carbon that might have attached themselves to the piston wall, just to ensure that you haven't got any of that carbon rubbing against the piston and the barrel, which could cause scoring and hot spots and could cause you an engine issue further down the line. And there you have it, that's how you decoat your engine. All you've got to do now is clean up these mating faces, ready for new gaskets, and put your motor back together again. You're ready to go and fly for another 50 to 100 hours. Thanks for watching this video guys. I hope it's been useful for some of you out there who have needed to decoke your engine. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can follow us on our paramotor adventures. With that all said, it's time for a cup of tea. See you in the next one.